Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport and we are going to take a look at every driver who has ever been entered in a Formula 1 race for the official Scuderia Ferrari team, including present day 2020 all the way back to the beginning in 1950. So now is a good time to subscribe because this is a five part series and you will want to come back to see who ends up where in the list. Now we have 77 drivers to look at so sit back, relax and let's begin. Sport. Number 77, Ernesto Brambilla. Now for my long time subscribers who watch all my videos, you may have seen my worst driver for every team ever list, in which I said Luca Badawa was the worst Ferrari driver ever, so who is this Ernesto Brambilla joker? And how could he be possibly worse than Luca Badawa? Well, Ernesto Brambilla never actually raced for Ferrari. He was entered in a single race for the team, the Italian Grand Prix at Monza in 1969, but he never got to race, as Pedro Rodriguez took over his car and Ernesto never returned. He never started a race in Formula 1. Having previously been entered for the 1963 Italian Grand Prix in a Scuderia Centro Suds Cooper, but failed to qualify. He was mildly successful in motorbike racing, and brother Vittorio Brambilla did race in Formula 1, just not for Ferrari. 76. Robert Manzon Another driver who never actually got to race for Ferrari, which is a shame because Manzon was a good driver. Having scored podiums with the Equip Gordini and Equip Rosier teams, he was meant to race for Ferrari at the 1954 Swiss Grand Prix. Unfortunately, a crash in practice meant he never got out for qualifying or the race and never started. His career continued with Equip Gordini for a couple more years, but had no more success. He was the last surviving driver who participated in the 1950 Grand Prix Championship, before passing away in 2015. 75. Piero Carini The first driver to make the start of a Formula 1 Grand Prix for Ferrari on this list, he qualified 20th of 30 cars at Monza in 1953, but he retired halfway through with an engine issue. He was part of a sort of junior Ferrari setup, similar to the Ferrari Academy now, but he wasn't used by Ferrari in Formula 1 again. He had two races for Scuderia Marzotto the year previously, which also ended in retirement, and sadly he would be killed in a Ferrari in San Etienne in a sports car race in 1957. 74. Luca Badoa Well, here he is, the lacklustre Italian who raced in Formula 1 in both 1993 and 2009, but never scored any points ever. He was a former international Formula 3000 champion, but couldn't take back market teams BMS Scuderia Italia, Minardi or Forti to points. His career seemingly ended in 1999, after another pointless season with Minardi, but when Felipe Massa was injured at Hungary in 2009, long-time Ferrari test driver Luca Badoa was drafted in, was caught speeding in the pit lane multiple times, qualified at the back in both races he entered, and still never scored any points. There may be drivers who did technically worse, but no one made Ferrari look like a laughing stock like Luca Badoa did, and he was quickly replaced by Giancarlo Fisichella. 73. Harry Shell Harry Shell had a long Formula 1 career with many different teams from 1950 to 1960, but only had one race for Ferrari. He'd only qualify 18th and would last 68 laps before his engine blew up. He was entered in the Belgian Grand Prix of the same year and qualified a respectable 9th, but had to give his car up to teammate Maurice Trintingent before joining the Van Wall team. He'd get podiums for Maserati and BRM before his career ended with a fatal accident at the British Grand Prix in 1960. 72. Andrea Di Adamic Again, only one race for Ferrari. In fact, it was his Formula 1 debut at Kyalami, South Africa in 1968. Andrea Di Adamic qualified an impressive 7th on the grid, just two seconds behind pole sitter Jim Clark. Unfortunately, he would crash on lap 13 when he spun on oil. Ferrari did not retain him, and Andrea Di Adamic went between McLaren, March, Surtees and Brabham in an unremarkable career. 71. Derek Bell Derek Bell is probably more famous for his five wins at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, mostly in Porsches, and not for his pretty horrible Formula 1 career with such luminaries as Tom Wheatcroft Racing, along with McLaren, Team Surtees and Techno. But he did make his Formula 1 debut with Ferrari. At the Italian Grand Prix in 1968 he qualified a decent 8th, but his fuel pump went just 4 laps into the race. 
He returned for the American Grand Prix at Watkins Glen, but qualified lower and his engine went 15 laps into the race. Derek Bell was a great sports car driver. Single seaters best forgotten. Number 70, Nino Vaccarella. Had a few Formula 1 races before joining Ferrari with the Scuderia Serenissima team, so had some experience, but his only race for Ferrari was the 1965 Italian Grand Prix at Monza, where he qualified 15th, and was classified 12th despite being 18 laps down after retiring with an engine issue on lap 58. Despite not having any success in Formula 1 with Ferrari, Nino Vaccarella did win the 1964 Le Mans race for Ferrari, partnering Jean Guichet in a Ferrari 275P, he won 5 laps clear of anyone else. 69 Nanny Galli Giovanni Giuseppe Gilberto Nanny Galli was in and out of Formula 1 over a few years in the early 70s. His biggest shot to impress was with Ferrari at the 1972 French Grand Prix at Circuit de Chirard. However, Nanny Galli only qualified 19th of 24 cars and finished 13th, a lap down from the leaders. He'd get a few more drives with Frank Williams in 1973, but disappeared from Formula 1 shortly after. 68 Jonathan Williams Raced as British, but was actually born in Cairo, Egypt, making him one of the few African drivers from outside South Africa to race in Formula 1. He drove for Ferrari at a bad time as they had lost several drivers to accidents, including Lorenzo Bandini, and Jonathan Williams was drafted in. He qualified 16th, finished 8th only ahead of Chris Amon, Joe Bonnier and Guy Ligier, who all ran into trouble. Not a bad run out for Ferrari, but he was dropped after one race, never raced in Formula 1 again, but did drive at Le Mans in 1970 with the camera on board capturing footage for the Steve McQueen movie released in 1971. He retired from motorsport and became a pilot. 67. Césaire Perdisa Perdisa had a couple of podiums for Maserati in Formula 1, but mostly of shared drives with the likes of Jean Bera and Sterling Moss, and his one Ferrari drive was no different, sharing with Peter Collins and Wolfgang von Tripp. They only managed to finish 6th in Argentina in 1957. 6th was not good enough for a point in 1957, but even if it was, Perdisa would score a third of a point. Césaire Perdisa would retire from motorsport that same year, after the death of teammate and friend Eugenio Castellotti, had he continued, he might have done more for Ferrari and been higher up this list. 66. André Pellet Another unremarkable Formula 1 career, André Pellet would score two points for Equipe Gordini before moving to Ferrari for the 1956 Belgian Grand Prix. He qualified last, 46 seconds off pole, not unusual given the length of a lap at Spa in 1956, Fangio on pole with just over four minutes a lap. André Pellet effectively survived for a sixth place finish, Three laps down before resuming his career with the likes of Equip Gordini, Tim Parnell and self-entered cars scoring no points, with his final race being in 1964 for the Equip Skirocco Belgi team. His son was even worse, Teddy Pellet had one race for Brabham before failing to qualify for BRM, like father, like son. 65 Giancarlo Fisichella Fisichella had a long successful career in Formula 1 lasting 14 seasons in the series. Scoring wins with the Jordan and Renault as well as podiums for Benetton. He was a good consistent second driver and seemed a good fit for Ferrari being Italian and very talented. But Fisichella's career coincided in Ferrari's Brazilian phase, with Rubens Barrichello and Felipe Massa hogging the drive. But when Felipe Massa was injured and Luca Badoa banished back to the test track, Fisichella stepped in to take his dream drive. He wasn't great, mostly in the midfield as he struggled to get used to the Ferrari. After five races, he scored no points and retired from Formula 1 at the end of 2009. 64. Andre Simon Andre Simon seems like a decent driver, getting drives with the likes of Maserati, Mercedes and Ferrari, but he never scored any points. His two races for Ferrari came in 1952, first at the Swiss Grand Prix where he managed to qualify in a good fourth place, but had to share the drive with Nino Farina and they retired anyway. He qualified well in Italy too, but only finished 6th. Shame because he was clearly talented, would have benefited from a full-time drive, but he raced some of the best cars of the era, so he probably wasn't too worried. 63. Ivan Capelli Ferrari were not in a good place in 1992, and the signing of Ivan Capelli was a weird one. He had some successful drives with Leighton House, including a couple of second places, but he was never the calibre of a Ferrari driver. But he was marked out as a potential future champion by some, he scored three points but retired from most of the races through the season, was never on the pace with teammate John Alesi, and was replaced for the last two races by fellow Italian Nicola Larini. He joined Jordan for two races in 1993 but failed to qualify in Brazil and retired from Formula 1. 
62 Gianni Morbidelli. After a tough year with Minardi in 1991, Gianni Morbidelli was rewarded by replacing the sacked Alan Prost at Ferrari for the last race of 1991. He gave a good account of himself, qualifying 8th on the grid and finishing 6th, scoring half a point as the race was cut short. Due to the torrential rain that led to a lot of incidents in only 14 laps of racing, including two red flags. Morbidelli wasn't retained for 1992, as previously stated Ferrari went with Ivan Capelli, instead Morbidelli returned to Minardi before switching to footwork, getting a podium in 1995, before ending his career with Sauber in 1996 and turning to touring cars where he has been very successful. So that is the end of part one, remember to subscribe for part two, hopefully coming out next week. Also we have action from Formula 1 and WRC to cover and you don't want to miss that either. We have another 61 drivers to look at and hopefully the list will be finished by next year which is coming quicker than you would think. Thank you for watching, remember to leave a comment, like, share and subscribe. Stay safe and have a good one.